On today's World Inside, two decades of China's membership in the World Trade Organization, how can China help reform the WTO to be better suited to a changing global environment? What will it take to safeguard the WTO's future? The world is changing before, so WTO members also have to change. And the true inside story of China's entry to the WTO and how it benefited not only China, but the whole world. Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Insight. I'm Tian Wei. This year marks the 20th anniversary of China's accession to the World Trade Organization. The WTO is currently facing formidable challenges, from the pandemic to the threats of deglobalization. How can China help to maintain the momentum of the member-driven WTO as the reform of the world trade body has been in limbo for years. As the second largest economy in the world and the largest developing country, how can China safeguard the WTO's future? I earlier spoke to the WTO Director General Nukozi Okonjo Ivela and WTO Deputy Director General Zhang Xiangchen. Let's listen to our conversations. Madam Director General, what a pleasure to see you once again. Thank you so much. Now, the decision-making process as a result of this is extremely cru uh, crucial. How do you make sure, Madam Director General, uh, given the rules of WTO for years, uh, the inclusiveness will really be the principle when it comes to uh, designing all these latest rules? Well, I mean, uh, that's why we have to change at the WTO. Whatever it is that has been happening in the past, it cannot be business as usual. That's what I've said. The world is changing before, so WTO members also have to change. They have to adopt mm. processes that will enable them to do things differently. And I'm hoping that one of these is, is the principle of inclusion. And I, as since I've been here, it's only three weeks, I have seen that happening, that there's a willingness to cooperate, there's a willingness to, to make sure that people are included, all are included in the discussion. Yeah. We're seeing it happening in the fisheries negotiations. I also think that in the green, greening of our um, eco economies going forward, we must be mindful of a just transition. In other words, poorer countries, will need considerable time in which to adjust and to make the required movement to renewables, to decarbonization. And, uh, you know, many countries are saying there'll be net zero by 2050, which is wonderful. China has declared 2060. We have to look at what other developing countries, poor countries can do and what time yes. we need and what financing they will need to make this happen. Right. Let me ask you more about the WTO. Uh, the appellate body is supposed to be the teeth of the WTO, but we see little progress in figuring out who will be the judges, and not to mention they will back to work. Uh, what to do? Will WTO still be able uh, to maintain its capability? The WTO uh, uh, has to work on the reform of the dispute settlement system. I think all WTO members are clear about this. I think the issue is what should be the nature of these reforms. And on that, WTO members still need to come to agreement. So these are some of the discussions that will be initiated. We, there are developing countries who have issues with the way the present dispute settlement system works. There are developed countries like the United States who have problems with the way it works. We have to factor all this into account and come to a common understanding of what type of reforms we want. We need it to be reformed in order to make sure that the rulemaking of the WTO still has the credibility it deserves. Mm. 
But Madam Director General, I know you know it very well. You have to deal with it. Uh, you know, the geopolitics of China and the United States and the complicated relations between uh, the trade relations between the EU, US, and China, for example, are only some of those issues you have to face every day in order to uh, find a solution to many of the things you just said. So is there a hope? Many say this transformation will take years. Well, the WTO can, as a multilateral, institution can certainly help our members like the EU, the US and China to solve some of the problems they have. And I hope they will indeed use this organization, reform it and use it towards this end because that's why it's here. But there are also some issues that need to be solved bilaterally between these uh, big trading powers. And uh, sure. there is an indication from the Biden administration and the EU, for instance, that they might be willing to sit together and try to find a, a negotiated solution or a mediation in, in, the, in the matters that have confronted them on, on the airline, the Airbus uh, uh, um, and Boeing dispute, for instance, that has gone on for many years. Similarly, I hope that China and the U.S. can also find a way to, to settle some of their differences you know, bilaterally. But any remaining differences, the WTO is ready uh, to be able to help members use it as a forum uh, to arrive at some good solutions. Mm. Uh, also, you are being elected into the Director General of uh, the World Trade Organization. Many hope, as someone originally coming from a developing country, will make the developing country uh, onto the map clearly. Of course, that's also the role of the uh, Director General anyway. Uh, on that point, how do you think you'll be able to carry out that expectation? Well, I, it, as I'm elected uh, as a WTO DG, I'm the WTO DG for all members. And my job is to support the membership to come to good agreements. I'm also from a developing country and, I, and, and I've lived in a de developed country for a long period of my life. So mm -hmm. I bring the two perspectives together and I hope that that can help us serve the entire membership. I've been mm -hmm. able, for instance, to explain to some developed country members the perspectives of developing countries on some issues. And I think they've received this well. At the same time, I've been able to talk to some developing country members to, to explain the viewpoints of the developed. This is what is needed to bring trust. There's, a, there's lack of trust among members at the WTO. Yes. We need to repair that. So by looking at the points of views of both sides, I think we can build trust and then be able to uh, move the organization forward to make good mm. decisions. Serving on one of the most important uh, multilateral platforms of our world today, Madam Director General, what is your view about the updates that we need to do of global governance today? Well, I think that global, uh, the pandemic has shown that global governance is very important and that uh, interdependence is evident for everyone. Therefore, global solidarity is key and the multilateralism is very important because we cannot solve some of the problems of the global commons like pandemics and climate change without multilateralism. So we need to strengthen multilateralism. We need strong global governance to coexist in a planet that has all these problems and all these uncertainties. Will there be updates? Well, I hope that the global governance system, yes, needs to be made fit for purpose. We have to look at our global institutions and see whether they are fit for purpose. That is why the WTO are making it a priority. Thank you so <laughs> much. Madam Director General, to see you once again and hope to keep in touch. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, Tian Wei, very much. Thank you. Talking about 20 years, uh, so many things have happened and China has been seeing this transformation. So has been China's contributions to the world that has also transformed the international trade system. Sir, how do, would you evaluate uh, really with brief words about this transformation? During the time when we participated in a ceremony of China's extension to the WTO, our feeling uh, was uh, mixed. 
uh, with uh, anticipation, excitement, and also with some uneasiness and also some uh, uh, anxiety. Because uh, before China's accession, there were a lot of debate mm -hmm. about the concerns of the competition with the international market uh, imported goods and services. Uh, especially people have the concern about the sectors like uh, automobile, agriculture. And some people believe those sectors of China will be destroyed by the international competition. So, of course, we didn't believe that, but uh, we need the uh, evidence, we need to see the outcome. Mm. And uh, at, at, at that time, the Chinese government uh, made a judgment through hard work, this advantage will overweigh disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And history proved the judgment is correct. But I remembered, you know, how hard the debate was inside China. And also after joining the WTO, some of the sectors actually have been impacted. As a, one of those, you know, core negotiators in the WTO, how, how were you digesting at that time all of these uh, you say side effects or improvements that, that needs to be made? You know, the, the, the outcome proved that uh, China is a major beneficiary of its accession to the WTO. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as I mentioned just now, the judgment has a precondition through hard work. So the, the, the benefit of China's accession is not given. We, can, we cannot take it for granted. During the 15 years of the accession negotiation, China made a lot of preparation. I still remember vividly, my colleague and I, we organized thousands of uh, uh, seminars, a training course uh, for the officials from the central government to the, uh, the local government, the entrepreneurs, to give them the opportunity to know what the obligation in the WTO, what the chi China's commitment, to give them time to make the preparation. I think it works. And also a uh, secret behind the China's success is to combine the domestic reform together with the integration to the global economy. When the two processes merge together, we help to release the vitality hidden in the millions of an enterprise. Do you think that remedies So that's the, you know, the, the good part. Uh, no, because this uh, uh, hard work, because the good preparation and because, you know, our efforts in the negotiation, you mentioned the uh, state trading, state online prices. Uh, in the negotiation, we f fight for, you know, the, 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 the flexibility, it's traditional period for the China sectors. And all these mechanisms worked in the past 20 years. Did China really carry out what it promised? Some uh, members mentioned this, that uh, China's performance in the past uh, uh, three years uh, during the transitional, uh, during the uh, review period, uh, the, the performance has gap with their expectation. So you know that the term they use is expectation. Hmm. For me, as a formal negotiator, the WTO is a contract, it's a legal document, it's about uh, obligation and right in black and white. For the legal document, for the commitment we made, the way fully uh, implemented it. Uh, through in, uh, reducing the tariff, uh, eliminating the quota the important license, and uh, liberalizing 100 sectors of services. So expectation is about a, a subject, subjective feeling of the people. You can have different uh, expectation for one people or one country, but it's not necessarily the commitment and the legal obligation of China. There are other regional and sub-regional uh, trade mechanisms that are flourishing. Uh, RCEP, as you may be very well aware, is one of those. Uh, meanwhile, you also see CPTPP, even though the two are very different in terms of levels. But you do see different regions are working out their solutions. So uh, whether WTO is still relevant, that is another question people often ask. Uh, at this point, what's your assessment? In 1995, uh, just uh, 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 after the establishment of the WTO, uh, WTO made a research about the relationship between the multilateral and the regionalism. And the conclusion was that with a robust multilateral trading system, the regional 
economic cooperation and the free trade agreement can play a supplemental role to the multilateral trading system. You can see uh, 25 years ago, WTO was quite confident. But now the, the problem is that the, the WTO as a state is not a robust, it's not powerful, it's not strong. So there's a fragmentation of the free trade agreement, the regional cooperation. I don't think it's a, it's, it's a bad thing. For the members in the uh, free trade agreement, they can benefit from the uh, liberalization in the free trade agreement. It's good. But uh, from the multilateral perspective, there is a, a, a phenomenal, we call it a spaghetti bowl. Too mm. many uh, free trade agreement. And it's difficult uh, for the members to get uh, into uh, you know, the implementation uh, of those uh, free trade agreement. So I don't think uh, the regional or collateral can replace the role of WTO because uh, WTO is still the main channel of the trade liberalization and investment facilitation. This is World Insight with me, Tian Wei. Coming up, China marks two decades of being a part of the World Trade Organization this year. The true inside story of China's entry into the WTO and how it benefited not only China, but the whole world after this break. Welcome back. This is World Insight with me, Tian Wei. Since China joined the WTO in the year 2001, the country's international trade has grown sixfold. China's WTO membership was a milestone in the country's reform and opening up. The changes are deep and profound, benefiting China along with the developing and the developed world. In two decades, China has become the world's second largest economy. The living standards in China have improved and access to goods and services has rapidly grown since joining the WTO. So what is the secret, quote unquote, behind China's rise from a latecomer to a major player in global trade? And how can others learn and compare notes with China? I earlier talked to Li Chenggang, Chinese ambassador to the WTO, and Yi Xiaorun, the former Chinese vice minister of commerce. Twenty years already, Mr. Ambassador, China's entry into the World Trade Organization. How do you see it? China's accession to that is a historical event, both for China and the world. After the accession, China has enjoyed a relative favorable environment for its development. And China also provided the opportunities to the others all over the world. It is a mutual success, mutual benefit, and common development outcome. The past 20 years told us, only when the world is good can China be good. And only when China is good can the world be better. China has grown from an offside audience to an important player on the WTO stage. Upon China's accession to the WTO, the then Director General Michael Moore remarked that with China's membership, the WTO becomes a truly world trade organization. In the past 20 years, China has grown from a lender and a follower to an active participant and a rule maker, making increasing contributions to the multilateral trading system. In the past 20 years, for those agreements reached in the WTO, China all made its own contributions. And we hear mixed voices about what China have achieved for the international community in that regard. So what about China's position now on reform of WTO, sir? Uh, China is an active participant and a contributor to the WTO reform. Uh, as early as in July, I think, 2018, China set up a Sino-EU joint working group on WTO reform with the EU at the vice ministerial level to exchange views on the reform. In 2018, China submitted a position paper on WTO reform. 
in 2019, China further submitted a proposal. In the discussion on the possible uh, MC12 ministerial declaration, deputy reform is the most important part. Currently, the discussion is focused on how to revitalize the deputy functions, including negotiations, monitoring, and a dispute settlement. Among them, to ensure a well-functioning dispute settlement is a priority to China and many members. And we do hope discussions could be carried on in the coming year. China has actively participated in the WTO Joint Statement Initiative on Services Domestic Regulation and E-Commerce. And now the JSI Joint Statement Initiative is another approach try to make the WTO more relevant and the more closely with the development of, of the world. So I think all the approach we are taking now is kind of efforts among the members try to make the organization can be uh, more successful. What about the uh, opinions among the big trading nations, such as China, such as the U.S., such as the EU? It's no secret that China-U.S. relationship is a very, in a very interesting period of time. So what would that mean, you know, Mr. Ambassador, for, uh, you know, China's contribution and the U.S. contribution in the discussion for WTO reform? Yeah, I think the China, the United States, and the, uh, the EU are the most important members of the WTO. The three members are biggest importers and exporters in the world, as well as imp important investment host and the receiving members. A predictable and stable global business environment provided by a role-based multilateral trading system are more critical to them. Besides, to address global challenges such as uh, cl climate change and COVID-19 pandemic, need WTO's role. So China, the US, and the EU have common responsibility in this regard. So on the one hand, we have different views, but on the other hand, we share the same objective. We share the, the common responsibility. Uh, what is it like for you, Ms. Ambassador, to work on a daily basis and to face the realities of both domestic consensus and the geopolitics? From our own experience, we say trade is of great significance for creating jobs, improving living standards, and maintaining social stability. That's why most of the people in China of my generation are firm believers in multilateral trading system. That is also the reason we support the WTO necessary reform and hope it could fully and well functioning as people are expecting. But however, we have to admit that there's an imbalance in the development of globalization and the trade liberalization. The greater gaps between the rich and the poor have led some free trade advocating country looking inward. So in the past years, the whole world has suffered unilateralism and protectionism. It tells us that, that only when all people could benefit from international trade globalization could get more support for their people. Globalization will continue. For China, as President Xi Jinping said, opening up is a hallmark of contemporary China. China will firmly safeguard the true multilateralism, firmly share market opportunities with the rest of the world, firmly promote high standard opening up and firmly uphold the common interests of the world. So as a best to that too, I will do my best. Minister Yi, 
you literally worked for WTO as the di deputy director general. And uh, yes, and also you work as the vice minister of uh, China's Ministry of Commerce. So I guess you know both worlds. Would you like to share with us at the very beginning your thoughts on the issue? Please, Minister Yi. China's succession to the WTO uh, in December 2001 has proven to be one of the most significant economic events both in our lifetime and in modern world history. China's historic accession created a win-win outcome. In bringing China under its umbrella, the WTO took a huge step toward its goal of universal membership and inclusiveness. As a result of China's accession, one of the world's biggest economies now is playing by the same multilateral trade rule book as other major trading nations, particularly in terms of strengthening global trade governance and the multilateral trading system. China's successful accession has also inspired many other developing countries to join the WTO. Since 2001, both China and the world have seen trade flows rise rapidly, with China experiencing a more than sevenfold increase in the volume of its merchandise exports and a nearly sixfold increase in the volume of its imports. Meanwhile, the volume of world trade nearly doubled. China also became a leading exporter and importer of services after joining the WTO. Let me show you some data on China's imports. From $244 billion in 2001, merchandise imports into China leapt to 2.06 trillion US dollars last year. This is a significant contribution to the world economy, but which is often or too often overlooked. Since 2008, China has become the leading export destination for LDCs, absorbing about one quarter of their exports. I think that's the contribution of China to, to the world economy and uh, its trading partners in the WTO. And that's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to know more, search World Insight or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for being with us. I'm Ice Master.